Yo guys, what's up? So today, I'm feeling very tired and very stupid. I've played a few Blitz games and I've played at the level of a novice arsehead, quite honestly. Um, but I wanted to share something with you, just a little bit of gentle exploration, just polishing of some lines, um, a, bit, a bit of opening theory. So this is really probably for people 1400 upwards but you know this is something that you can do you can do yourself at any level really so it just got me to thinking um because I, I probably played a couple of vienna games earlier on today just in blitz because i'm just waiting for my brain to come back on before i, I do anything serious in, in rapid and i thought well look i just wondered um is are there any particular lines in the vienna that seem to catch me out, okay? So, my starting point, so basically I'll, I'll take you through the process of, of what I've done, um, how I've spotted kind of a hole, a hole in my bucket, and then how you can go on to fix the hole. So, it's, it's more of a general principle that I'm wanting to convey in this video rather than this specific theory, okay? But anyway, so I start on chess.com because that's where I play my games. Um, if you play loads on Lee Chess, you can do it on Lee Chess with, you, with your own games. So here as um, white in the Vienna. So I've played the Vienna um, with knight c3 a thousand and twenty times. Okay, and I tend to do quite well. That it's, it just said fifty-seven percent uh, win rate. Now. Um, Knight f6 walks into the Vienna Gambit. That's the, the most common response that I've ever found. And I have a 63% win rate because it's just it's just great, right? Uh, knight c6, I know what to do there. I bring out my bishop. If they bring out their bishop, happy days. We play the, the queen trap line. Um, d6 is an interesting one. So d6, we play the Omaha Gambit, I think. So... Um, with f4 here, you can play f4, and that's the Omaha Gambit, and then you bring out the Queen. But I, I've got a 53% win rate in that, so that's obviously something that I need to, I need to look into, right? Um, with like, if they bring out the Knight, do I know what to do? I've lost two out of three games in that line. So that's obviously something I could polish. Um, so I'm, I'm just looking down the list, and I'm basically looking for, for are there any lines where it appears to be better for black? And there's a couple that we see here with 51% win rate for black here with the move C6. And also there's a 50% I've had 12 games in the F5 line. Now I did a video on the F5 line. This is like you're, you're getting in your Vienna Gambit in reverse. Um, did I do a video on it? I might have done a video on it. Um, I've certainly done a study on it, okay? So which you can check out if you go on Lee Chess and look at my studies. Um, so this is interesting, but it's not that, it's not brilliant. Uh, because basically I think you can take as white... Um, anyway, I can't remember that. I can't remember the theory because my, my brain's not working that well. So I'm just going to try and remember one thing today. And what I'm going to try and re remember today is how to handle c6, because I don't do too well against c6. Now, I've played d4 here 12 times, and I've won two thirds of the time. I've won eight of those games, clearly. But I've also played bishop c4. Now, bishop c4 looks very natural. Um, and I, I don't do too good when I play bishop c4. But that's the one I've, I've tended to play more of the time because it's natural looking. So that is a hole that I need to fix. You don't want to be playing bishop c4 here. Why not? Well, let's have a look. I play bishop c4, and then my opponent most often plays d6. All right. Um, they've played d5 once, but then I've got three attackers. That doesn't really make sense. But d6, hmm. And it's like, well, white's got a lead in development in terms of pieces. Got two pieces out, but black has... A, a kind of a, a stronger pawn structure. Now here, against this, look what I've done. I've thrown my queen out to queen h5. 
I've done that 11 times and I haven't won too well, right? 11 times, 64% of the time I lose. Why? Because it's very easily refuted. G6 um, is 50-50 for black. Uh, but queen F6 here. And suddenly my, my queen looks a bit ridiculous there. You know, if I, I could come back here, I'll probably... Um, so what have I done here? I've played knight f3, and I've played d3 a couple of times, but black does better. Black here has won four out of, what is it? Three out of five games, something like that. So anyway, so the point here is, note to self, I need to know what to do against c6, and it looks as though d4 does better for white, because I've won eight out of 12 games, I've won two thirds. So now what we do is we flip over to uh, Lee Chess and I've got open my Vienna game study here, which you can also access, it's, it's public. And um, I've added a chapter on the 2C6 line. So let's have, a, let's have a butchers. Right then, so here we go, 2C6. And this is kind of like a caro approach, isn't it? Preparing to push D5, then if E takes D5, C D5, and black's got a very sexy center. Okay, now, here I've got the Leach's uh, database open, right? And I've got the full spread on uh, Blitz and Rapid, which is just what I'm tending to do at the moment. And you can see which responses from white at this point tend to do best. So knight f3 is fine with 54%, right? But d4 here, now d4 was the one that we saw that I'd done, I, I was getting better results. d4 hasn't been played as much, only 7.8 thousand compared to 30 thousand for knight f3, or 25 thousand for bishop c4, which is the move that I was playing. Bishop c4 scores 52% for white. Okay, but the, the one that really stands out here, like a sore thumb, is d4 with a 62% win rate. Now that's over 7,800 games which is a significant number, right? So, you know, if it was 12 games or 20, you'd go, uh, I can't really take that to the bank, but 7,000 games, you absolutely can. All right, now, so what, we, what we've got here is this is the line. This is what I'm recommending for myself. And then if we look here, E takes D4 is played 60% of the time. Um, D6, yeah, it also looks kind of natural. Uh, so, you know, you might want to align against D6, okay? D6 is actually Black's best response. I've, I've put this in the notes here. Um, and the computer, the engine actually says this. If I put Stockfish on now, it's got white slightly better, right? If I go back one, uh, It's, it needs a second to catch up, I think, there. Um, oh, no, so if they push d6, yeah, then it's computer saying a4, marginally better than bishop c4, and knight f3, all right? But so what you need to do is you need to kind of look at what does the engine say, but you always have to remember that you have to take what the engine says with a pinch of salt because the engine is assuming that everyone's going to play the best moves from this point. So it's looking for an almost like an absolute computer-like advantage, which isn't what you get in the real world. The player's database, on the other hand, is what you get in the real world. And here, it's saying that F4 actually looks good. A4 scores really well, but again, it's only 22 games. It looks unnatural, it looks weird, and I don't really know what to do with it, but F4 here. So that's what I'm saying is the way I'm gonna go. It's been played 330 times, and 59 against 35, I'll take that all day long, right? Obviously, it doesn't guarantee that you're gonna win, or it doesn't even guarantee you're gonna win 59% of the time. But here, we get um, E takes D4 is quite common, and then Queen takes D4, and you know, we've got two pieces out on the board, we've got two pawns, they've got two pawns, this bishop's tied to the defense of G7, um, and it just feels like a relatively comfortable Vienna-like situation, so I'm quite happy with that, right? Now, but d4 isn't the most common. The most common is 
uh, E takes, sorry, uh, D6 isn't the most common. And then we're going to recapture with the queen. And then from here, you can see that there are three or four typical responses. So I'll go through them in turn. But look at all these, 62, 63, 62, 62, and 65 for white. So white's actually doing very, very well here. And you can see why. Black's pushed the pawn to c6, which does nothing to help this bishop get out on the board. And quite honestly, this push now doesn't really come with much, you know. Again, this bishop is stuck to the defense of this pawn. And... Um, there's nothing really threatening this queen. In fact, the knight would love to come out to c6 and hit the queen and kick her away, and it can't because of the stupid pawn on c6. So where do we go from here? Knight f6, very common. Um, looks like a mistake, according to uh, the eval bar that's just gone up to 2.8 for white. And what we do now is we push the pawn and kick the knight again. All right now, if I go just back here, e5 wins 71 percent the computer says it's not best in fact the computer here says it is best bizarrely with e5 <laughs> now it's changed its mind okay and then there are there are different ways it can go but i mean this is already you know plus two after four five moves is very very good so you yeah, know the knight might come here um or c5 C5 could also be played, you know. Um, so let's have a look at this one because so C5 is most often played. Also Queen E7 though. So Queen E7 is the second most popular at this point. So let's have a look at that. Queen E7 not good, right? So I would probably mark that as at least dubious, as in inaccuracy, uh, because we now play Queen F4. Okay, and that's. Oh, hang on. No, we absolutely don't. It hated that move. We don't want to do that at all. Okay. Uh, what's it saying? Bishop e3. Why did I push queen f4? Bishop e3. So we've basically unpinned this pawn now. Uh, very often you'd play queen to e7 in, in like the Vienna Gambit line. But now this knight is again under attack because the, uh, the pin is broken on the pawn. And it's just winning. You know, white is but white is winning here, so I'll just say white is winning, right? And that's probably all you need to know. So after queen takes d4, what else have we got? And you can go, okay, d6 now. And again, it's got plus 2.8 for white. So I'll just take you through the line. Bishop out. Got two attackers, two defenders on that, but more importantly, I think what it likes is that we're preparing to long castle. Okay, after f6, sorry, knight f6. One attacker on there, it's the only piece that the black's got in the board. We've got three, and boom, we long castle. The bishop, bishop's got no trouble getting out into the board. The knight's got no trouble getting out into the board. We're gonna wipe the floor with black there. Um, if they play bishop to e6 here again, we just long castle. So that's all you need to remember, right? Certainly at the intermediate level. What if they bring their queen out to f6? Well, here we're saying e5. Again, you know, Vienna style tends to be quite aggressive, quite pushy, push in the center, dominate the center. Um, and here, you know, obviously we're putting the question to the to the queen. The queen will very likely go somewhere like that. Yeah, or g6, either way. Queen goes to one side. Uh, we bring out our knight, because knight f3 scores very well. Bishop e3 also scores well, getting ready to castle. But really, you're in a comfortable situation. If you're plus two now on move five, happy days. So nothing really to worry about there. And another idea is if they push the pawn to c5, defended by the bishop here, um, then queen e5 check. And we're plus 3.8 already at this point. So bottom line is, guys, if you're a Vienna player, and you see this c6 move. Now, how common is the c6 move? Well, it's not terribly, right? According to Lee Chess, it's played 3% of the time. But that means you are gonna see it, and like, like we've seen, I've seen it, and I haven't responded that well to it, right? But more than that, I'm getting a, a, a bit of a feel for the Vienna, right? So now I know I'm gonna push d4. I'm gonna push d4 at, at this point in the game, 
they'll probably take, I'll probably take back, and I know I'm relatively comfortable there. Um, <clears throat> as if we flipped back over to chess.com, bishop c4, I've not done that well in the past. So that's it, really. So if you want to polish and just gently improve um, your, your favoured openings, then this is a method that you might use. Go through your actual history of games. Now, you know, it may be that actually Rapid is very different to, um, to Blitz. Maybe I've done worse in Blitz. Here, Bishop C4, no. I've done badly in, in Rapid as well. Still 62% in Rapid. Okay, but d4 still winning two thirds. Okay, so you know, go through, look for any particular chinks in your armor or holes in your bucket, go back and fix those little holes, and um, and go on about your day. That's basically it. So uh, yeah, just a little tip there, and of course, please feel free jump on Lee Chess, use these studies, nick them you know, to your heart's content, make copies if you like, whatever. I'm very, very happy to, to keep sharing this stuff. And, and you know, like I said, um, in the o Omaha Gambit here, so if they play this, uh, we can see that after F4, right, um, there, there are a few holes in this that, that I know that I need to plug in my own play, so it's pretty rapid. Rapid's what matters to me. Okay, so black does quite well. Queen h4 check. That's an interesting one. All right. So this this is all you need to do. Go back over your history, find the holes, patch them up, move on. All right. So I'm going to do a bit more of that. Thanks for watching. See you soon.